the most unsung division uh, across our community. And that's because we do so much work um, just all over the community in lots of different areas. And you can see some of our entities up here and talk more with your district connectors to learn more about what the division does. Um, but tonight we're excited to really sort of flip town halls on uh, flip the script on town halls, right? So how can we do communities conversations differently? How can we engage with our community differently? And so the District Connector program has come up with these community conversations to really try to uh, listen to you all. One, well, first we're going to educate you a little bit, and then we're going to have you all come up with solutions based on what you what you think might work effectively to address some of the challenges in our community. And so thank you again for coming out this evening. Um, before we get started, I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Mikel Lowry, because this is his district, District 8. So Commissioner Lowry. Thank you so much. Well, welcome to District 8. Obviously, I'm a little biased. Uh, I believe it's uh, the best district, obviously, in our county. I know Commissioner Milton would disagree as he represented District 10 for so long, but also does some work in District 8. So we share him a little bit. Uh, but uh, thank you for spending uh, your, your time with us this evening. Thank you for the visit community service and all the work that you all are doing. I think, uh, obviously, the better our communities are, we have engaged people. And as we were talking at our table, just sometimes being some better neighbors at certain times as well. And so your ideas are important. Your engagement is important. So you start here, and then you take it to your street, into your block, and then we hopefully can mirror this across our county. So thank you all for being here. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Ariel Gibson Martin, right? Aren't you next? All right, good, good timing. <laughs> so she's going to fix the microphone and start talking. Um, so Ariel is the program manager for the District Connector program that's hosting you tonight. Testing. All right, all right, we're back on, we're back on. Hey, good evening, everybody. Thank y'all so much for coming out here. Uh, today, we are going to dive into expectations. We have an incredible speaker. Um, I am so glad to have her with us. And then we're going to do some breakout sessions. So you're going to do work at your tables. Um, and then we're going to have a little QA. We're going to wrap up. And that will be our wonderful hour that we're going to spend together. So thank you all so much. All right, so who are we? So the District Connector program is new. Um, so new, we hired everybody on February 1st of this year. So we are seven, eight months, almost eight months in. Wow, almost eight months. Um, and so there, is, there are 13 Shelby County Commission districts in Shelby County. And we have one program coordinator for each of the 13 districts. And every single day, they are involved in what life looks like in that community. So they're meeting with stakeholders. They are promoting community engagement. They are connecting people to resources. And they're doing all of that so that we can have better, more connected communities all across Shelby County. So, uh, you see us here, we're in District 8. We have a wonderful team of, eight, of 15. So I'm gonna invite the District Connectors to come on up and introduce themselves to you. Hello everyone, um, I always get to go first because I serve District 1, which is Millington, Arlington, and unincorporated Shelby County. Um, and I'm Rachel, and the commissioner uh, for District 1 is uh, Amber Mills. I also occasionally serve District 2 um, while that person is transitioning in. And since she's covering 1 and 2, I'm Glenn Mullins from uh, District 3, which is Bartlett and Lakeland. My commissioner or our commissioner is Commissioner McRae. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jasmine Banks. I serve District 4, which is the Germantown, um, East Memphis, Shady Grove area. The commissioner for District 4 is Commissioner Brandon Morris. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cheyenne Gray. I'm the district connector for District 5, as well as transitioning to District 10. Um, and those areas are Cordova, a little bit of Bartlett, District 5, District 10 is mostly Orange Mound, a little bit of East Memphis. And those commissioners for District 5 is Shantae Avent, District 10 is Brittany Thornton. Good evening, I'm Dr. Nicole Gates. I represent District 6, which is Raleigh, Nutbush, Unincorporated, Shelby County, New York. And 
our commissioner is Mr. Casper. Hello, everybody. My name is Austin Wine, and I'm the connector for District 7, where Commissioner Henry Brooks is the county commissioner. My areas include a lot of North Memphis, which is Hollywood, Springdale, Douglas area, also Binghampton, and I have some Frazier, a little of Midtown as well. Hello, hello, hello. I am Shayna Way Rock. Get your connection for District 8, which you are kindly in. So, welcome home. Yeah. My great district is Lake County. Yeah. 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 It's how I live here. Um, and I always like to say that District 8 chases the river. So, if you know, you know what that looks like. But if I need to drop some names, I will do that. It's West Frazier. Uptown, downtown, we got a little bit of South Memphis, we're going to have like South City and Coesville, a little bit of North Memphis, should I go on? You know where you said keep going. Okay. But yeah, I am so glad to see you guys here. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Sonia Lee. I'm the district connector for District 11, which is the greater Hickory Hill area. Parkway Village, a little bit of Oak Haven, a little bit of White Haven. And our commissioner is Ms. Clay Bitts and Juan Rospano. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tiffany Armstrong. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm the district connector for District 12. The commissioner for 12 is Erica Sugarman. Um, 12 covers a little bit of Hickory Hill. Southeast Memphis, two streets in Cuyahville, <laughs> and a few streets in Germantown. And we'd like to thank you all for being here. Hello, everyone. My name is Catherine Winsley, and I am the district connector for District 13. That encompasses East Memphis, Cooper Young, Mayor Claire, University District, all of those great neighborhoods. And we are glad to be here with you today. Missing. Today, for his birthday, we have Dr. Fisher. He takes care of District 9. That is Westwood, White Haven, and that is represented by Commissioner Ford, my commissioner in District 13, that represents 13, because my actual commissioner is wrong. Sorry. That was <laughs> so, <laughs> the commissioner for District 13 is Chair Michael Welly. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Christopher Gabby. I am the performance and data lead for the District Connector Program, so I work with all of the individuals you see up here today. Thanks, Chris. All right, thanks, team. All right, so you are here because we're having a community conversation. I bet you're like, what is a community conversation, right? And so uh, this program is data driven. I know that that's cliche nowadays, right, today, Drew, but it truly is. And so we have a community survey. If you've not taken a survey yet, Catherine, if you can hold up the QR code on the table, it's in this wonderful plaque. All of your connectors have access to it. It was also at the sign-in table, so please take the survey. But we had residents take the survey, and the survey is based on the social service of health. And we said, okay, what do you need in your areas? What do you need in your communities, right? Like, what's going on in your life? And from the results, we pick the topic for the community conversation. So we give the survey, you answer the survey, we take that information and we give you the space to, to collaborate on solutions based on what you need in your communities. So that's how the program works. And that's why you're here, what you're here to do tonight. You're here to work together on solutions when we talk about the quality of education in our communities. All right, so we got some engagement guidelines. One, we want you to be present. I know there are a million things going on in our lives. I probably get 100 emails a day. I get it. But we're asking you to just put that aside and be present in this moment. The second thing is sometimes we have to agree to disagree. We all have lived experiences. We have different perspectives, and that's rich, right? Like that makes conversation good. But we also might not always get along, and so we're going to agree to disagree and go to the next, the next item. Uh, be positive. There's a way you can reframe things uh, to where we're able to get the most out of it. Two and then you. So allow for two people to talk before you reshare again. And then refrain from any live recording or streaming during an event.
All right, all right. District 8 is back on the mic. <laughs> all right. Why your participation matters. And I hope this is like a sing-along, so I hope y'all catch it. Voice your ideas and concerns. Why? Because your participation matters. Collaborate on solutions. Why? Because your participation matters. Yes. Build stronger connections. Why? Participation matters. <laughs> okay. Contribute to local initiatives. Why? Because your participation matters. A plus for everybody. All right, I'm just going to take a couple of seconds because I like to be here for a good time and not wait a long time. All right, our guiding framework social determinants of health. Who's heard of these? No one. I'll tell you what they are. All right. <laughs> I know you guys have, that was a joke. All right, what are the social determinants? Social determinants of health are the conditions in which people are born, live, learn, work, play, worship, and age. Basically saying it's our everyday life. And these are the five social determinants of health, economic stability, education access and quality, healthcare access and quality, neighborhood and built environment. Stop to breathe and social and community context, okay? All right, well, why are we here today? That lovely survey that my awesome manager told you about is what brought forth our conversation. How do we improve the quality of education in our community? So put on your thinking caps and I'm gonna hand it back over to my coworker. Hello again, everyone. My name is Catherine Winsley, and I'm here to introduce the speaker for this evening who is here to educate us. All right, I am now introducing Dr. Nina Reed. In her 24 years as an educator, Dr. Reed has been privileged to work with leaders across the United States. She has worked as a teacher, Title I instructional facilitator, school administrator, and college professor. Currently, Dr. Reed is an educational consultant for nonprofits that focus on equitable education outcomes for students who are most often overlooked. Dr. Reed's fondest memories in education come from the decade she spent teaching and building relationships with parents and community leaders. Her goal is to support the development of academically engaging learning experiences for students through effective leadership coaching. She is a graduate of the University of Memphis with a bachelor's degree, Christian Brothers University with a master's degree, and the University of Memphis with a doctorate degree. She is committed to sharing her passion for learning, and she and her daughter authored a children's book that introduces the Spanish language to children. I introduce the some and present the others, Dr. Nina Reed. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hey, good evening. I'm gonna say it's Nina. My daughter is Nina. <laughs> That's okay, I lack creativity. People say you all literally have the same name. <laughs> Different vowels, same name. Before I go, I see somebody that I haven't seen in so long and I, I wanna hug her. Can I give her? This is my Neo. This is my Delta Sigma Theta Neo. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're talking about improving the quality of education in the community and what I requested was the zip codes in this community and I looked up the schools that are um, a part of it and this is just a breakdown of that <laughs> now this is not saying there are no schools here that's just none for this district Right, Shana? There are schools in 38105. It's just none. Okay. So get a good look. You have K through A. You have elementary, middle, high. It looks like mostly elementary. Remember that for this next slide. Where are they? These are the 38103 schools. The 38104 schools. That's 
Bellevue, by the way. 106, 107, 126, 127, and 109. So a mix of elementary, middle, high, and K through eight, like I said. Now that was a law that passed back in 2016 and schools got letter grades for the first time. And it was met with a lot of scrutiny. I don't know if you all remember how this actually came forth, but it was a lot, the educators in here know it, it was a lot to handle. But what you see, these two, right? If you think about a report card and you have a D or F on your report card, I'm gonna say something funny that my brother who is two years older than I am told me, he said, D's get degrees. That's higher ed. We, we don't want D's in elementary, middle and high though, right? <laughs> but if you have these, are you proud? No. Now let's go back and look. <clears throat> the majority of the schools here, we have three, five, six, seven, nine elementary, and then three K through eight. So that's 12. <clears throat> a lot of them are in this space right here. So that's a concern about the foundational part of education. You think about kindergarten first, Second grade, they're in that learning to read phase. Then you go to third grade and beyond, they're reading to learn. So if that foundation is not right, they're not going to be good readers. And it's not a lot that you can do without reading. <clears throat> so the first thing that I thought of in elementary schools, let's advocate or effective, not just early childhood initiatives, but effective initiatives, pre-Ks that are designed to meet the various needs that our four-year-old students have. <clears throat> That's one way to improve the quality of education in your community. Are you familiar with the daycares in the area? Have you ever gone in and just asked for a tour to see what are they doing? Because they should, it shouldn't be a babysitting service, right? They're learning. <clears throat> and you can establish regular communication practices with school leaders and board members. Now, that goes across the board. That's not just elementary. Yes, that's middle and high as well. But if you start in elementary, they'll know who you are, and the conversation can keep going. But the school leaders don't mind the community support. Talk to your board members. Do you even know who represents the district? Who, who represents the district here? The school board member. McKessie. McKessie. Have conversations about early childhood because it is so important. I have an eight year old. And of course, with her being eight, you know, she was in that pre-K kindergarten stage during the pandemic. Well, I was working, right? So what did I do? I put her a, a device in front of her. I'm still dealing with it. And she's eight. So we have to be mindful of the importance of early childhood. Then you go to middle school, right? These are... 12, 13, 14 year olds. You want mentorships. So collaborate with local businesses to establish those and other resources, both human and material. These are children who in a couple of years will be getting ready to go to work, fill out applications, ask customers, ask clients how they're doing. So they need to be able to make eye contact, be able to open their mouths and talk. <clears throat> Another thing that you can do in middle school, create safe and healthy spaces to learn. Safe and healthy spaces. Children are not the same as they were years ago. What does that mean? It means a lot. It means a whole lot. And 
that would have to be a totally separate meeting to, dis to break that down, right? But what we have to do is make the space that they learn in, make it safe and make it healthy. Be who you are, but learn. That's why we're here, right? That's why we're at school. <clears throat> and then high school, the same thing. Safe and healthy spaces to learn. They, they start going to work here. So a lot of your after school initiatives, they may not be picked up. That's why that during the school day is so important. Because you may, you may not be able to get them after school because they're doing sports or they would rather go to work. I think I remember that my nephew started working at like 15. So some jobs, you don't have to be 16. <clears throat> Is there, are there any questions about anything that I just discussed? I'm, I'm happy to elaborate, to break something down here, talk more about early childhood, anything at all. Say it again. When you say resistance, you mean like you're trying to meet them in person? I, I would say try to put something in writing, but I would hope that that resistance is due to like a busy schedule and not just not wanting to talk because the constituents are how they got there, right? So it's, I know that they're not turning their back when they get there. So maybe you should try emailing putting it in writing, copying someone, <clears throat> and then following up. When you've determined that your email should have a response, follow up, my, my window is 48 hours. If you haven't emailed me back, I'm gonna email you back. <laughs> One more question. No, no, no. no. <laughs> First of all, can we give our guest speaker a round of applause? <laughs> Secondly, once we start our um, challenge mapping, we hope that our speaker will still be here, float around, feel free to ask all the questions. And any questions you don't get to ask, we have comment cards on the table. Please write them in, we'll compile them and do the best of our ability to get those answers out to you in a timely fashion. So one more time, can we give a wonderful round of applause for the information given? Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we want to take this time to recognize Groovy Gratitude for providing us with amazing food, delicious dinner, and pressed water, which I had never heard of before. I'm still trying to figure out what that is, pressed water. But, um, so at this point, after we've gained a lot of information from our guest speaker, it's time to break out into groups. This is where the action steps in. This is where we have an opportunity to really put words into play. And so each table, which is numbered, will have a district connector who will kind of help facilitate the conversation as we move forward to answer these questions. Challenge mapping first, community experience topic. What are some of the biggest challenges you see in our communities surrounding the conversation topic, quality education? Once we identify some of those things, civic challenge, who or what entities are best positioned to address these challenges? Is it the citizens? Is it governmental agencies, nonprofit examples? Oh, I'm sorry, not example, et cetera. <laughs> and lastly, supporting evidence. What actions, information, data would make the action visible to the community and support the significance. So this is the part where we all get to contribute. So we wanna take about 10 to 15 minutes. Go. Hello, Gerald.